Well, here comes my surprise. Of course, you can still see some of that tornado damage around some of the yards, but what a pleasant surprise this is that's coming now. RL Carriers. ARL, that's the best initials in the world, don't you think? It's my initials too. I got a subscriber named RL that comments on my uh, channel a lot. Here he is. All right. It was sent to me as a gift. There's a subscriber that wanted to send me one and wants an honest review of it, and I'm gonna give you an honest review. Because putting it together, I ran into a few snags, all right? And um, I know on my About page, which has been there since I started my channel two and a half years ago, I say I cook on inexpensive equipment. Well, that's no longer the case, but I didn't buy it, it was given to me, all right? And when I say, you know, high dollar equipment, not inexpensive equipment, I'm talking about equipment that the average American might have to put on a credit card or finance in some other way. All right, because I've got, this is grill number 13. Out of my other 12 grills, 10 of them cost less than $100. Two of them cost less than $200. One of those was given to me by a company for review. And the other one I built myself, it's my drum smoker. So um, this one was given to me. It was sent to me. I'm very, very happy. I didn't realize I was getting it till just last week. He got it from Barbecue Guys. He told Barbecue Guys that he was giving it one of them to a YouTuber. He bought several of them and got a deal on it, all right? But he told me he wants me to give an honest review. That's what I'm going to do. I ran into a snag putting it together. Here's what happened. All right, no use hiding it from you anymore. You know it's a grill. You know it's the uh, Nuke Delta grill. We'll talk to you about the pronunciation here in a little bit. Um, it arrived last night just after five o'clock on a Wednesday and I teach a class at my church at six o'clock on, on Wednesday night. So I had to go to church and uh, teach the class. When I got back, it, it was almost dark. So we're unboxing it right here first thing in the morning. So I got the drill driver ready, pocket knife ready. I'm gonna get this thing uncrated. If there's anything that is weird or unusual when I'm uncrating this, I'll tell you about it, but I'm not going to uncrate it on camera. By the way, it says Paria Delta. That means Delta Grill. They got the English backwards. All right, so far so good. This top was just screwed on there. Just unscrewed the screws, take that off. Looks like I've got two boxes here. That box has some, um, it's kind of looks damaged here. There was three nylon straps around this part. I cut those, I'm gonna cut this one right here. And uh, I'm gonna cut this pallet wrap off of it. and. Uh, Get these boxes undone so if there's any more surprises i'll tell you but it does look like something went through the box right here closer look at what i'm talking about you can see the, the cardboard has been sort of punctured through there even though it had the wooden crate on it but don't think there's anything wrong with it let's let's get it open right, got the camera phone off the tripod got the plastic wrap off of it the box is not printed Maybe this is just an outside cover, but you're seeing what I'm seeing here and it's you know It's folded and whatever. But there's no glittering printing or or, uh, or sleek um, Advertisements on this part anyway, so you're gonna see this as I take it off because I haven't pulled this out of here yet And you're looking at what I'm looking at and there's the thermometer dead nabbit all right, I'm going to get that plastic off of there, and we'll take a look at what we got. All right, got the plastic wrap off of it. Now, you saw that thermometer fall out. It's right here. I was worried about that. We got the plastic wrap off, and it's got a thermometer installed on it already. So, don't know what this extra one is. I didn't see it on the one at the uh, Barbecue Guy's site, and I hadn't seen it online yet. But anyway, I've got an extra thermometer. Looks like that that fell out. I suppose all the accessories will be in there. Got the casters right here. I'm gonna have to put that on the base. And you see the main grill body is inside the base. And there should be a bar that goes along here that'll have these things on it that will help support the grill. So I'm uh, gonna move on to the next step from here. All right, this is the bar that goes across the other side of the base. And the accessories are inside the warming drawer there. So we'll pull those out. And I've removed the grill grates. I'll talk to you about the grill grates a little bit later, but that's basically my unpacking process at this stage. The uh, main part of the grill is then stored inside the base. Lift it up and put it on the saw horses. I want to tell you that if you uh, do this, you're going to probably need help. It weighs 121 pounds. 
And it's not that one man can't lift 121 pounds, but it's big and awkward. So got my son to help me lift it up on the saw horses. I'm gonna put the wheels on the base and we'll uh, show you what this thing looks like when it's assembled. Once we get the wheels on the base, we're gonna set that on the base. All right, had to drive the 13 miles into town to come to the farm and ranch supply and uh, hardware store here to get the hardware because it came without hardware. Um, it needs eight 5 8 inch bolts to put the casters on, four for each one, and then the two main wheels just stay on with a keeper uh, pin. So we got uh, the keeper pin and 5 8 inch bolts. That's not going to be expensive. I'm running here to the hardware store, get those, put it there. But I could leave that out of the video, but it's true. It did not come with the hardware to keep the wheels on, so I got to get that. All right, and uh, then go back home, finish putting this thing together. All right, now, by the way, I did find out about the thermometer, all right? Got, got that second thermometer, you guessed it, because the one that's installed on there, centigrade, Celsius, metric. The other one, got Fahrenheit and centigrade, Celsius, metric. So, because they're made in Argentina. So they give me a thermometer for Marco, Fahrenheit. Okay, the instructions clearly say 5 8 inch bolt. All right, I don't know if you can see it right there, but 5 8 inch bolt, that's a 3 8 inch bolt, and it's too big. Um, when I saw the 5.8, I said, there's no way that's going to happen. So let me show you real quick. And I got to make the 26-mile uh, round trip back into town to exchange these bolts for something a little smaller. Okay, this is where the casters mount. The bolts go in there. This is a 3.8, and a 3.8 is too, is too big. So I got to go change these out, all right? Um, be back in another... Uh, half hour or so after I run into town. You see what I'm talking about here? It, uh, it won't go in. All right, the wheels go on with these uh, hairpins, cotter keys, cotter pin, with, uh, keeper pins, whatever you call them. Um, they just slide in like that and the main wheels go on like that, but I gotta go get the right size bolt for the uh, caster. So back into town we go. Okay, I'm on my way back from the uh, hardware store and I've got five 16 inch bolts. There's one size down from the three eighths and I expect these to fit. But I got to thinking before I went, hey, I will go to the uh, Spanish instructions. But this didn't come with Spanish instructions. My Argentinian grill did not come with Spanish instructions. So I said, no big deal. I'll go to the Argentinian website, all right, which is productosnuque.com.ar. That's productos nuque, not nuque, because you can't use the funny little N, the N-Y in a website because the World Wide Web was invented by gringo English speakers and they didn't include the N-Y in it, which it might be bigoted in my opinion, but you know, anyway, I went there and I looked for the instructions for the Delta grill and I couldn't find them. So I said, okay, no big deal. I'll go to the Miami importer, which is realfirebarbecue.com. Now they got some good videos about this grill on real fire barbecue. And they also tell you there that they're now being sold through barbecue guys out of Baton Rouge. So I went to real fire barbecue and I could not find the Spanish instructions there. So I went to uh, the Uruguayan website, couldn't find them there. Went to the Bolivian website, there I could find instructions for some of their other grills like the Piranha and stuff, but not for the Delta. And all I want to do is find the Spanish instructions because if I get the Spanish instructions, the bolt sizes will be in metric and then I can just buy the metric size bolt and I'll have the right size bolt. I went to the Paraguayan website and the Uruguayan website and the Bolivian website and the Argentinian website and the Miami importer and I couldn't find Spanish instructions for my Argentinian grill. Hola gente de Argentina, hay personas en los Estados Unidos que pueden hablar español. Por favor, incluyen las instrucciones uh, para esta parrilla de Delta, por favor, porque yo puedo leerlos. Gracias. Well. 5 sixteenths inch bolts fit. So the instructions say 5 eighths. It's 5 sixteenths. That's what you need. 5 sixteenths if you're using uh, English measurements. All right. Finally, after two trips to the hardware store, got the casters on. Now I put washers on, just washers I had on hand. These were, I had six of these and I had four of these black ones. So this one's got four black ones. That one's got four um, aluminum, silver colored ones, whatever. Anyway, that doesn't matter. I don't know if you're supposed to use washers. The instructions didn't say washers, but I did. Anyway, the casters are on, and of course these are on with the hairpin. Showed you that earlier. Got the um, pins on the first trip to the uh, store. Time to flip it over, put this thing in, set the grill on top. If anything uh, strange happens in the next process, I'll show you. Otherwise, the next thing you see will be the 
grill completed. Well, you know what? There was a little bit of an issue. This crossbar is supposed to fit in here and here, and it fits real, real tight. We had to pull this apart a little bit to put that uh, on there, and you can see it's still sticking up. So I've got to whack it with the rubber mallet, go to a little whack-a-mole here as my son pulls out on this. All right, Eli, go ahead. Put your foot there and pull out on it a little bit. I'll put my foot right there. Pull. You pulling? Yes, sir. Whack-a-mole. There it goes. It's even. All right, that got it. Oh, this side came up. Hold on, we gotta do this side too. I'm just showing you this in case this happens Hit to you. In the Hit it in the middle. And all right, hey, the frames together. Now, gotta put the grill on the base. There it is. All assembled, the Nuke grill. And yes, it's under the cover. I'm gonna unveil it for you here in just a moment. First, we're gonna have a Spanish lesson. Then we're gonna get into the advantages and disadvantages. I'm gonna talk about the uh, cons of it first, and then I will uh, talk to you about how to use it, and then I'll tell you what I like about it, the advantages that I find in it. All right, so I'm gonna talk about the good things last. All right, let's go how we pronounce this name. All right, let's take a look at the name. First, we're gonna go backwards. There are no silent E's in Spanish. Everything, you got an E on the end there, you're gonna pronounce A. Yeah, the letter is A, not E, A, okay? K's are not a natural Spanish letter. Anytime you see a K in Spanish, it's a word that comes from English, German, French, or some other language. It is not a natural Spanish letter. Natural Spanish uses a Q-U. So this K tells you that it comes from English, so you can guess what it means. Now, there's only two silent letters in Spanish, the U and the H, and the U is not always silent. Most of the time you use pronounced, and it's pronounced right here, okay? Even though it's got those two little um, flames over there, that's not an umlaut, okay? You're gonna pronounce this, ooh, ooh, like the double O in boot. And this, when you see the N with the uh, tilde over it, the funny little N there, that's the N, nye, nye. We have the same sound in English in words like senor, um, like onion and funion and bunion, and you know Spanish words like senor and piñata. It's that N-I-N-Y sound. So this is the nuque, nuque. That's how you pronounce it, nuque. Trust me, I've been a Spanish teacher for 20 years. I've been studying Spanish for 28 years. Nuque, nuque. Well, there it is. It's about noon time, and I started on this about 6.30, but I had to make two trips into town for the uh, hardware, um, and that's 13 miles into town, 26 miles round trip, so that's 52 miles I drove just to get the wheels to put the casters on. All right, you see, this slide, the whole unit slides across the base, and you can put it in the center, or you can put it on the right side, or you can put it on the left side. It, the instructions aren't really clear. A lot of the pictures I saw showed it all the way over like this. If it's all the way over, you got a little shelf space to put the uh, coal shovel and coal rake. If it's in the center, you can put the shovel on one side and the coal rake on the other. All right, and of course, if it's all the way over to our right-hand side, then the couple, shovel and coal rake would go over here. All right, let's take a look. I did put in the uh, Fahrenheit um, thermometer, and I want to show you something about that. All right, that's what the uh, thermometer looks like. Now, let me open this up and show you so that you know. You see that white cap right there? That does not go through the hole and it does not come off like that. All right, I got one on the uh, Celsius thermometer, so we'll take a look at that. What happens, to, in order to get it in, this thing has to come off. You have to pull that off, it just slides off. See, what I did, I just started turning and turning and turning, thinking it was gonna screw off, and it never would come off. I was like, come on. And then I looked at the other one and it just slides off like that. So you gotta pop that part off to put the thermometer in. So if you buy one of these grills, you get in one of these grills, you're new to one of these grills, be aware if you're putting the Fahrenheit thermometer in, that that part pops off. Now, what I am worried about is, since it's not on there, it just kinda snaps on there. If the metal gets hot and expands, will that pop off during the cooking process? I don't know, maybe it'll get, um, well, I can't get it on there with one hand right now, but you get the point. All right. Um, comes with this griddle so I can do some griddle cooking and that's a fairly big size griddle um, for doing peppers or fajitas or whatever all right I'm gonna take it off and I'll put it here in the warming drawer that drawer right here is the warming drawer 
You light your coals here. You get a hot fire going here. You take your coal rake. I know I'm doing this one-handed, but I'm not a professional operation. I'm just a fella having fun with food, fire, and a phone camera in my backyard. Except right now, I'm in my front yard because my front yard's mowed, and my backyard will be mowed right after I finish this. So when the coals fall through, you get the coal rake, and you rake the coals over to where you want them to be under the grill. All right? Or you could simply shovel them like this, and you shovel out the ashes. You're gonna treat this like a fireplace. The guys at uh, Barbecue Guys, how about that, the guys at Barbecue Guys? Yep, that's me, stopped in there and got some questions answered. Told me on Tuesday, this is Thursday when I'm doing this, they told me on Tuesday that you don't hose it out because you'll get water under these fire bricks. By the way, it did come with two extra bricks. Now you can take these bricks out. You move this up, post right there and you can take all the bricks out and wipe it down if you want to but they said just treat it like a fireplace uh sweep out the ashes all right um it looks like it's going to be a lot of fun to cook on all right let's talk about some things i think that are somewhat negative of course you see right down there those are scratches from when i slid it out trying to get it out of the thing right here because it slides there's scratches so this uh, metal will scratch that kind of worries me a little bit. I don't know how bad that is another thing These stop the lid You see what I'm talking about they stop the lid, right? Okay, that's what those things are there for they stop the hold the lid in place, but this one is kind of a skew It's not Quite level. It's not quite in there. It's welded in there tight, but it's not Straight it's it's sort of pointed out now I got this as a gift. I'm not complaining about it. If it was something I'd paid for, I might be a little upset. But I was told to do an honest and fair review. I'm not going to give you a uh, uh, glitter-covered, shiny, sugar-coated, sweet taste and review on this. Um, I'm going to tell you what I like about it. That's coming up. But, you know, this is uh, honest. All right, this is the other thing. Here is where you control it. Well, you know what? Before I do that, I need to show you this. Look at the handles here on the coal shovel and on the uh, grill lever. They're beautifully finished with a stain on them. They look gorgeous. They're really nice, okay? All three of them. A little nitpicky here, but you can see that the uh, shovel in, that's this one right here, okay? The handle doesn't go all the way down to the base. That's not an issue with me. I just pointing it out, all right? But that's what's happened here. The handles on the lid and the handles on the warming drawer and storage compartment are not finished. They're just raw wood. And this one isn't sanded. This one's sanded real smooth. This one is sanded a little rough. It's still a little, still a little rough. I don't think I'm getting splinters from it, but it's not sanded as well. You could tell the difference with the handle here. This is the handle that matches the uh, control lever. And um, I don't know why there's not a finish on it. It may be because they're closer to the heat and you don't want to scald your hand on a melted polyurethane or something. I don't know if there's a stain I could put on there that's heat, high heat resistant or whatever. But as for now, I'm just gonna leave them like they are. If um, they start to weather real bad or something, I'll figure out some way to cover them. But these are not finished. I'm assuming that is because they are so close to the coals and the heat. That's a protective issue. One more negative, actually one, one thing I'm gonna point out and one more negative and then we're going to get into what I'm looking forward to in this grill and what I like about the grill. This one isn't negative, but you see these little white specks? I don't know if you can, it's real sunny out here, but there's little white specks in the porcelain on the grill. The grill grate is a porcelain covered steel, maybe porcelain covered iron. Um, but it's porcelain covered and there's these little white flakes and when I opened it up I thought it was little pieces of styrofoam on there and my wife was like that's fleck it's supposed to be there it's called flecked it's a it's a design effect and so I don't know how long these little white specks will be in here but they're in here now and uh they're kind of kind of cool looking I like that all right the grates do pop out they come out like that and you, there's two of them one on this side and one on that side i'm not going to do it because i've got, only got one hand right now all right my first time fooling with one of these argentinian style grills uh the thing about gaucho grilling is um you can lower the grate 
and you can raise the grate. You've seen the Santa Maria grills with the uh, chain on them and stuff like that. That's the Santa Maria where it's got a chain or a, a cable or something and it got a winch at the top that rotate up and rotate down. That's an Argentinian style grill too. This one doesn't have a winch. What it has, and I don't know if you can see inside the box there, but it's got two little wheels, all right? They go, and as you rotate it, they go up and down, and they push these up or down. And, of course, it has a lock right here, okay? And so that locks it in place. To lower it, you lift it up a little bit. You would move this out of the way. Well, I can't do it one-handed, but maybe you can see you move the lock out of the way, and then you can lower it back down, all right? But this is how you lift it up, like that, and let it down you do this however notice my grill did not go down the lever is all the way down my grill did not fall now this comes out of here I took it out and I wiped it down with corn oil to see if that'll help happen there's a little bit of debris in here where they cut these things and I'm gonna see if that changes it a little bit but you kind of gotta push on it and it'll fall down. Now, of course, I would, if it was hot, I would do that with the coal rake or that, but it doesn't just fall on its own. Maybe as it gets worn out and greased up a little bit, maybe it will. So it raises. All right, see if we can do it from this angle right here. It raises, but if I uh, unlock it, it doesn't fall unless I put pressure on it. Uh, the ones I've seen online are not like that. They fall when they're supposed to fall. So this one's not doing it. Just being honest with you. A little bit more about how to use it. Put the charcoal here, light it. You can use lighter cubes. You can use uh, paper underneath there. Get it lit, get a fire going. Move coals with the coal rake or the shovel underneath the grill where you want them to be, okay? And raise the grill height or lower the grill height to where you need to cook. You get to play with fire with this one. One more thing I want to point out, this duh hole unit comes out and I think this would make a fantastic Dutch oven table. And I plan to try to use it for some Dutch oven cooking too, which, you know, it probably wasn't the idea between behind the uh, Argentinian designers, but you know, there you go. All right, we're gonna talk a little bit more and uh, then the next time you see this grill, you'll see a little bit of my first cook. All right, this is not a set it and forget it grill. This is not a turn it on and let it go grill. This is a grill where you get to play with fire and have fun. The marketing hype with it says, you know, hey, for anyone that likes wood fired cooking, likes playing with fire, uh, I barbecue because it controls my pyromaniac tendencies, all right? And I'm gonna have a lot of fun with this Argentinian Nuke grill. So all the problems with uh, putting it together, out the window. We'll get this fixed. That thing not dropping down, I'll get that fixed. Stay with me. All right, grill going back down. I got in there with a file and I filed out some of the little edges from where they cut these uh, pipes here. I made sure nothing was rubbing too much. Looked and made sure everything seemed to be straight. Still doesn't fall down all the way, but it's doing better on its own. But I put an 18 bag of pound of charcoal on it and it'll go down. And it'll lift up. And I figure if I've got food or a cast iron pan on here, I won't have any trouble. But without the weight, it's going down better now than it was, but it's not going all the way down. I think it'll start, once it heats up and everything, it'll get better. So I'm not stressing that. Okay, here on my first cook, I want you to notice that these are pretty strong. Those welds look, I don't know if they look strong or about average. They don't look like they're gonna break, but these that hold the lid open are pretty strong. And then it's vented along here so that what happens is the oxygen flows in here and it flows out here. And so it's really efficient. Y'all, I am having a blast cooking on this thing. This makes it all worth it. The frustration of two trips to the hardware store, one, because the hardware wasn't there, and two, because the size was misprinted in the book and there was no Spanish directions. Uh, and um, the thing not going up and down, it is. I got that fixed. Look, guys, I got some chicken on here, saffron butter based. The recipe for this is coming up. I'm uh, 
butter basting this chicken, and it's gonna be delicious. We got these onions starting in the griddle over here, and these onions are going to uh, be, uh, have a balsamic glaze on them, balsamic honey glaze on them. I've got some corn on the grill, we're gonna do some leeks. Y'all, I'm having fun and really, really, really enjoying this grill, and this is just my first cook on it. It's all worth it.